um, the the Earth kind of got yeah. It, it was no. It used to be like a multiplier on its damage, and now it's like a flat amount of damage. It's still a really good combination because Alacrity still boosts your no. attack speed, but it's not as like four hits and your tower's gone as it used to be. I mean, if you really want to go for that type of strategy, there are still other ways to do so. For example, the Spirit Bear. You could also put the Lacrity on that, although we haven't really seen any of that at all. But, uh... Nah. Lone Druid's a very unpopular hero these days. Alright, second phase bans here. Vichy Gaming taking out some of the harder to catch heroes. And to be fair, if you put either Brute in the... Let's, let's pretend he's the offlane right now, right? If you have an offlane okay. brood and a four position clockwork, that's a lot of uh, your stuns normally coming from those positions. And these are heroes are not really stunning uh, at all, so. Yeah, I, it's not like that. a Shaker or a Slardar, that type of thing. Right, or a right. Sand King, yeah. Speaking of brood, Five seconds remaining. or rather, Lone Druid, uh, it's a Lone Druid fourth ban, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I guess they may have gone down the same hypothetical route that we went, where it was like, huh, wonder if they're going to go for some kind of push strategy here. Which Invoker is still an available pick if Vici wants to go for it. Yep. I don't know if Ori, I mean, I'm sure he plays it, but I don't know if it's like a signature of his or anything. Do you think that Necrofoss is perhaps one of the strongest core in this patch, in terms of the drafting phase? Because I feel like you could pick him up first phase, and there's three lanes that he could go into. Um, it just kind of hides your strategy very well. He adapts very nicely. could itemize in a bunch of different ways. We've seen Veil first, Rod of Atos. He could get a mech when it comes down to it. We've seen Blinks. We've seen Dagons. What can this guy do, dude? He can't physical damage carry. So that's one thing. I mean, does he need um, to? I guess he can't push buildings that well. He can't push. Because I'm surprised that, like, I'm not seeing more Rubik strategies against Necro. Because Rubik is a fairly good hero. You get Death Pulse, which gives you built-in Sadist. Oh, every single spell of his is great. I guess Ghost Shroud isn't that great, but it's pretty easy to not steal Ghost Shroud. And Scythe is great, and then obviously the Null Field is powerful as hell whenever you're in team fights. Obviously that's like a late game thing, but still, like, I don't see that many Rubik's. I still, Oracle is somewhat being picked up, at least in the China scene, as we've seen in the first two days of these qualifiers, so that's another good pick that I think. Yep. Um, Glimmer Capes are kind of making a resurgence as well. There are ways to deal with Necro, and there are carries that can also deal with Necro. We even saw Doom yesterday as one of the options as well, but uh, he's definitely very versatile. I agree that it's a pick that you never really need to be concerned about. You can yeah. throw it in at really any stage of your draft, and he can core in any one of the lanes. He's just really safe, you know. You, you second pick a necro, I don't you really you don't really worry too much yeah. about like restricting your draft. Like a way a brewmaster or clockwork opening would restrict your draft. We're gonna see the wyvern here, and unfortunately this is gonna be yet another support wyvern. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Oh, okay. Maybe are you are just on the ground floor of like some dueling fates knowledge that Winter Wyvern's gonna get like a agi buff or something? No, I've I've been seeing Ice 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 play off lane Wyvern yeah, and it's been pretty still. cool, so But that's just Ice Ice Ice. Just the one of the best uh, off lane players in the world. We're gonna see Skyrath Mage, so this is uh, the quote-unquote counter to the Winter Wyvern Co Embrace. Really not gonna do uh, too much in terms of protecting any cores. And also, a pretty good pick against Brewmaster, if you could uh, get off that Ancient Seal to prevent the split from coming out. Gotta be somewhat careful against Clockwork, especially because I think Skyrath nowadays, when they have to go, they generally go for something like a Rod of Atos. So, I think this game he might need to go for a four Staff if he wants to essentially live. Yeah, not, not only is it good countering Vici's heroes, but that is, like, I actually am surprised that I'd, I personally have not seen the Skyrath Necro combo before, but that is, that seems filthy, because yeah. your Ancient Seal boosts up the Reaper Scythe damage so much that you could probably kill someone from like 70% HP just like that and that's not even including the fact that Reaper Scythe keeps the target still so you can Mystic Flare them in the meantime. Although you have to really coordinate that combo pretty fast because I'm not sure if the Mystic Flare will do that much damage. I don't think you could go like 
Mystic Flare Scythe and kill somebody from full HP, alright? Uh, maybe maybe um, if there's like a Veil of Eight, Veil involved, which I'm sure Necro is gonna get as well. Well, that's what I'm saying. The Ancient Seal is like a built-in Veil. Right. Well, Veil and Ancient Seal. And Scythe. And Mystic Flare. So let's, let's keep adding them yeah, up, yeah? Someone's definitely dead there. Yeah. Oh, Venomancer. I, I don't even know... Yeah, like, the Venomancer is not like a... It's not... I don't know. I, I've fallen out of favor of Venom Core in the past few weeks slash the past month or so. Mm -hmm. It was kind of dying down as TI was winding down. In the first few days, it was very popular, and the group stage was very popular. And then it kind of got figured out to an extent, because people were like, oh, okay, well, Venom's just going to get a Midas, and he's going to go farm the jungle infinitely, and then he's going to get his XP talent. So if we just run him down, then he's not really in the mood to plant a bunch of wards to defend his tower. He's just going to be farming, and we can just hand him out of his own base. Not going to lie, I like uh, Braveheart's draft much more than Vichy Gaming. Slark? A very good core pick against pretty much everybody on the side of Vichy, right? You could pretty much jump out of COG or at least use your ult and survive within it. Uh, you could uh, dark pack off Drunken Haze. Venomancer shouldn't be able to, you know, work against you too much. And something that you brought up the other day is you could still steal stats from uh, Winter Wyvern or rather whoever he puts under uh, yes. Co-Embrace. So. Right. I, I really like Team Braveheart here. I, I feel like they are just countering Vichy's draft. Five seconds yeah, Slark's a really good pick. I like that quite a bit. It's, uh... You think maybe we could see the... Radiant the controversial EE hood first Slark? <laughs> I mean, it might it might not be terrible here, right? It's good against right? Venomancer. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I pretty much... doubt that will happen, but... You know. Maybe, we'll wait uh, and see. Because uh, they have a lot of damage. Like I said, with Necro Skyrath, you have damage galore. And okay. You talk, what the hell? Well, we were wondering what exactly is the deal with Vichy's draft. And now this all makes sense, right? Because Arc Warden is a hero that eats a ton of farm all over the map. So likely you want a couple of cores that could, uh, well, share some space. And it, this is Winter Wyvern off lane. It's 11 handling it. Fenrir and Lanham on support. Bruh. Unless they swap. Mm. Mm. I don't know what's going on here. I like it. I don't know what's going on, but I like it. Unless they swap, then I don't like it. <laughs> Does it not show you swaps in the draft screen? Oh, they, I think they do. No, they still have it. Alright. They still have their heroes. Here we go. It's lit. Okay, so so tell me, what is the strategy here for... Let, let's continue theorizing, even though I'm still not 100% sure. It's a boost first Wyvern in the offlane. Yeah. So what's the, what's the skill build? What's the item build? What's the play style? What do you do here? Okay, so I think uh, the one benefit of Wyvern in the lane is that she's actually really strong if you get the levels. Particularly if you get a uh, couple of levels into Arctic Burn, then you could pretty much use it every time a Crete Wave meets up, meets up, and that's a lot of harass. Uh, now, if you're under a very, like, a, a lot of duress in the lane, you could put more points into Splinter Blast and just go for more of a range farming build if you want. Um, what I'm trying to say is that she's very flexible in the lane. And she's also very good with items. Uh, you just don't really see too much of that when you play 5 position support. Um, of course, a lot of people say, oh yeah, yeah, you could get the uh, Aghanim Scepter and, and, you know, have your Arctic Burn on 24-7. You don't tend to actually do that until maybe your 4th and 5th item. You're still looking for more teamfight items or, or kind of farming items. Getting an early blink is kind of like getting a blink on Magnus when you have, you know, blink with uh, Cold Embrace, or sorry, Winter's Curse as an initiation tool. But I think this game he's looking more for things like 4 staff or maybe even a, uh, a early support glimmer for the team. But we'll see how things go. But that still sounds support oriented. I, I was hoping you were gonna say like, "Yo, Bloodthorn first item" or something like that. I've been seeing a lot of um, Maelstrom first item just to base because once you have Arctic Burn turned on, you have like a building range, right? So you can kind of right. have him as a semi DPS hero. Um, I, I'm just excited to see where this is going. 
Did I say okay. that uh, Team Braveheart has got a better draft? I take that back, dude. I don't know. Arc Warden, on the other hand, is a hero that I've been historically skeptical with. It's a pub stomper hero certified, but in competitive games, I feel like teams are willing to group up and deal with an Arc Warden, which is his main, like, that's his problem, is that if he's not allowed to just do his own thing 24-7, then he's not the best at reacting. Yep. They have a lot of really good heroes to pick the Arc Warden, Slark being one of them, Nyx Assassin being another. And even in team fights, you could just siphon him and get a kill. Oh, Levin, taking a ton of damage here from this pounce. We'll need to juke through the trees. That's gonna be first blood. He's already buying items. Oh, one last hit's gonna do it. That is a pretty sloppy play from uh, Eleven there. Wyvern, he's nice using back. Arctic Burn super aggressively. Yeah. Even though it's only level one, he's using it like pretty much off cooldown. I think that's the way to go. It's one of the kind of most insane laning spells if you think about it. True, but it's also your escape spell, and right after it timed out, Nyx Assassin went for an impale, and he was kind of stuck in that tree situation. Yeah. Now the one good thing that is going well for Vichy Gaming is that they're giving a true 1v1 on the mid lane uh, for Arc Warden versus Necro, and I think that's where Arc Warden is really at the strongest, right? When you could walk up to, let's say, Necro and drop a level 2 Flux when Y Chan is away from the creeps, you could actually get off a lot of pot shots, so... watch has got to be very careful uh, in his positioning and such. Yeah, and I also am curious to see this interaction between Spark Wraith and Ghost Shroud, because Spark Wraith uh, dispels, doesn't it? It used to purge. I think that it might have taken away. I want to say they took away the up. purge, yeah. I, I, They took away some aspect of it, let me verify that. I think the slow is still there, but the purge is definitely gone. Uh oh, 11 caught in the tree here, Pound's gonna hit as well, and I think that's gonna be yet another kill. Well, a lot of attack slow there, and HMX might pay for it, Lanham needs one more right click, he is gonna get it. Yeah, you're right, it got patched out. So, no Ghost Shroud counter interaction, as he is getting gone on in the mid lane. There you His go. Clockwork is going to join in. Flux, man, doing a lot of work. Tower is doing a lot of damage to Fenrir, but... Uh, get the aggro back! Ah, oh, Fenrir is gonna go down to uh, wide chance. Still though, a good pick. Yeah, this Necro is going to need a stick. I'm surprised he didn't roll out a base with one. You knew you were gonna be up against an Arc Warden, and Arc Warden is known for casting tons and tons of spells. Yep. Instead, he goes for double Null Talisman. He still hasn't even gotten a stick. That's strange, but okay. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map. Looks like we have a now a 1v1 between the Venno and the Darkseer. And Darkseer is getting denied. Oh my god, he's only got 4 CS, dude. I mean, I guess on paper it is quite easy to deny against Iron Shell, but players do mess it up from time to time. Paparazzi, though. The mechanic is there. Well, now that it's a 1v1, it'll be easier. I think Clockwork was doing a pretty good job zoning him out. And you can't feel too safe as a Darkseer, even against, uh, even if Venno is the carry because, yeah, all this magic damage. Venno's got the one point in Gale. I'm surprised I even took the one point, because really, I don't think he could force the kill. Um, but, yeah, it's all good. Clockwork's on the prowl. They have a ward here to see Necro. And it would be a pretty easy kill because I think with Cogs you're a little bit too far away from your creeps to turn off Flux. Well, it comes down to whether, let's say, the creep is also cogged in, right? So. Yeah, that's true. Um, but you're, you're right, like, this is a very good combo, right? Because when Clockwork runs at you, you're generally just kind of trying to run away. And that's right. where Flux is going to get you pretty good. Oh, and Y Chen has completed a full wand now, yep. so... a little bit safer. Gonna drop a ward? Well, that thing's gonna get dewarded. Yeah. <laughs> yes, being correct, uh, Clockwork's been off the map for like a minute and a half by now, so... 
Yeah, but Arc Warden's perfectly okay with this. Clockwork okay. is like, come on, man, I want to get a kill. But Arc Warden's like, no, I'm level 6 now. I've got my Tempest double up and running. Life is good. Well on his way to his Midas, got his Glove of Haste complete in his stash. Things are... I, so, has Bottle just completely fallen out of favor now that you can't duplicate consumables on the Tempest? Um, I think Bottle's still good on Arc Warden. It's just more that he's trying to rush the Midas, which I think is... Oh, okay. You know, what starts the show for Ori, so... Yeah, that's true. I think if he was under a lot of harass, let's say from a Queen of Pain, then he might have been forced to get it. Lanham's uh, doing a ring around the Rosie against HMX, but it's going to take quite a bit of damage from the tower. Meanwhile, Finmer unable to get close enough to see why. They I gotta... have their shrine, so they can use it. And they probably will. Would you say that uh, Vichy Gaming is winning all three lanes? Yeah, I would. Mainly because even this Dark Seer, like usually in a in a. 1v1 situation, a Darkseer will at worst break even, but he's like legitimately losing this lane. Paparazzi has 44 last hits, 14 denies, Darkseer has 20 last hits, 0 denies. And so, it's rare that I'll ever say that a Darkseer is losing the lane, but this is not a good look. Right. But he's even still playing so defensively, it's just one Venomancer down there, but Venom's so high level now. Even though he is maxing out Plague Wards, which, it's irritating, but the Darkseer has a stout shield, so it helps out slightly against that. But I guess the sustained damage of the two points in Poison Sting is too much for him. He's just been using his Plague Ward to last and deny, which is yeah. part of the reason why he's so ahead. Uh, top lane, Eleven is just constantly spamming Dyer's their Arctic Burn. Harassing down, uh... Harassing down the core pretty hard here. There is a port in though from the Darkseer. Jump, pouncing forward, 011. Doesn't actually have his defensive spell just yet. They're gonna dump every spell on different targets. And as a result, they're not gonna get the core. And are they gonna get Lanham? They are, but here comes Ori porting in. He gets the one kill. Now focusing on CY, that's two kills. Is he gonna go for a little bit more? No, that'll be it. He didn't even have Tempest double up. He was using it in either the jungle or the mid lane, so. That was just pure Arc Warden coming in and an enemy team that does not have any creeps to surround them because Flux should not be able to be that effective, but if you've dove that close to an enemy's tier 1, chances are you don't have your creep wave behind you. Yeah, and when the enemy carry that's going for early Midas ports in to find a double kill, no, man, that's, that's not a good look. Meanwhile, gonna have his Midas. As Paparazzi uh, takes down the tier 1 tower, because Darkseer ported away, he's now working on the tier 2. Vichy Gaming is stomping right now. And there's no reaction. I don't even think Wai Chen's gonna go bot. Yeah, yeah he's gonna go back mid. Darkseer, or no, no, Slark comes mid bot. But Slark can't deal with this any more than a Darkseer can. I think Slark does even worse. He's only level 4. Paparazzi just making this. Someone, need, yeah, someone needs to do something about Paparazzi. He shouldn't be able to get away with this. I think they really need to send like the Necro to actually get the kill. I'm pretty sure he survives against anyone else, right? Yeah. When everyone's so Especially low. Especially now that he has Poison Nova. You need the Venomancer, who is not level six, so I guess you can't do anything. He's trying to get level six as he's now getting gone upon and killed. You mean the Nyx? Who did I say? Venomancer. I was like, I was oh, confused. Right. Yeah. Venom gonna get the. My bad. The Ven no, no, no. We, we got you. Ori. Yeah, this is uh, this is rough. Ori I don't, has. I don't even think it's like the heroes specifically. I think VG Gaming are just like, I, I don't even think they're outplaying. I think Braveheart are just like they're they're mind gaming themselves. Now they're sending four heroes, but they know 100% sure where Venno is. Oh, mid lane, double flux, double spark wraith. Where are you at? Eh, trying to port out of this. I think he might just die. Yes, he will. That port need to go right from the get-go. Dude, that was some... Dude, what are they... What Did is you... going on in the bot lane? Oh. They're trying to gank Paparazzi. Why did they need to scan him? They know where he is. I mean, you get him, but that's just a four-man gank. And because oh, he ulted... He got no, no, he I think this really is fine. With his wand. Yeah, this no, is totally fine. fine. It's a four man gank. After ganking, you have to teleport back to base because you ate a Veno. He had 12 wand charges. He was silenced, but he was waiting for the last second, but Nyx Impale finished him off. So, did you see how uh, Ori started the gank off against the Necro? 
So, so Necro was standing next to the range creep, right? So he thought he was fine from flux. Or he popped his ultimate minus the range creep. Oh, what a play. And then just double fluxed him. It was like, oh shit. That's clutch. And uh, Necro was so shook that he TP late and died. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of cute tactics you can do against that. Same thing with, like, if you're against a melee hero who's kind of hugging their creep wave, if you draw aggro, and then, like, the second all of his creeps start coming towards you, oh, you, you drop a flux, then they're like, oh god, yeah. do I get closer or do I run away? That's pretty sick, too. Alright, 11. Skill build, interesting. Three points into uh, Arctic Burn, three points into Splinter Blast. No ult just yet. We're looking to pressure down this tower, but Nyx Assassin already in position. Yeah, he's level 6 now. He's got Vendetta and he's got an Ion Shell on top of him. And that's a maxed out Ion Shell, but no luck. Doesn't find anyone hiding because they used the scan to find Paparazzi earlier. At least they will get the tower denied up top. Okay, so we're used to seeing... Uh, Arc Warden going for, you know, very farming oriented build. He's got like Diffusal Blade queued up. We've been seeing a yeah, lot of Diffusal needs... Blade first as items. What do you think about something like that on, on Arc Warden? I think it's needed because of Necro. Like I said, if you didn't. Oh, Hook. Yeah. Flux. Yeah, he's dead. Um, yeah, no chance whatsoever. So, do you think this is just because there's an Arc Warden game, or do you think. If there's... I think it's a good item on Arc Warden in general. You, you mean if it, this is because there's a Necro in the right, game? Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I think it's a good item because he is an Agi hero. Uh, if you flux someone and purge them, then chances are they're not going to be able to, because like, so a lot of times if you flux someone, then they'll stand right next to their ally, and then both you and your ally as a pair will retreat. But then if you defusal, then all of a sudden you're doubly slowed, and one of the slows is muted. And you're not going to have your ally be like, no, that's a cool, I'll walk at 100 move speed to match your pace. So it really hems in an enemy. And then obviously, like I said, it's an anti-necro item. The one thing, the one cute interaction is that, uh, whenever you make a Tempest double, it dupli- Oh, wait, Paparazzi in the top lane might be in trouble. That courier made it out, so it's fine, right? I think he has he's fine, though. dude. Yeah, I think he's HMX. fine. I think, I think Slark needs to be careful. Yeah, Paparazzi still has a 15 wand. He blocks himself in. It's cool. Nice gank. Yeah, so the interaction is whenever you make a Tempest double for items that have charges, except for BKB, BKB is the only exception, uh, it'll copy the original's charges. And so you can basically have a permanent max charge Diffusal Blade and just spam every single charge on your Tempest double. And oh. then it'll time out, and then you make a new one, and it'll have fresh charges again. It doesn't co copy the current charge. It copies, yeah, it copies the current charge, but you just never use the Diffusal Blade on your real hero. I see. You just always use it on the Tempest double. Okay. Looks like Eleven also wants to join the Midas party. Has one queued up. Oh man. He's almost level 8, and he'll probably take Winter's Curse once he's 8. He wants it off of this creep so bad. Alright, look how annoying he's being right now. It's gonna fly over the tree lines. He's out. Yeah, he's out. And they don't care to defend this because right now they're pushing top tier two. Hook. Yep, that's Connects. gonna find one here. Lao A. Nice vacuum out, but that's not gonna protect him. Why Chen? Has he used Scythe at all yet? No, he's yeah, I don't not. Think so. And now bot lane Nick Sesson runs into Young Eleven. Lineup going in right now. Paparazzi should be careful about the scythe. And they're gonna pop the ultimate. They're gonna actually try to chain chain stun down on Y Chen. Y Chen looking for the scythe. Oh, he's gonna get it off. Not gonna get enough to kill though. Has infused raindrop. Still baiting, juking, jiving. Great cogs here, keeping HMX inside and HMX. I think he's gonna be dead as well. Whoa, Paparazzi still baiting. Nicely done. He's in the tree line now. This is all Paparazzi. The whole game. He's just been sitting in trees. Baiting. I hope he doesn't die to the tower, that'll be embarrassing. <laughs> nah, he's good. He's got plenty of armor with that veil. And they might actually try to go on Darkseer? No, he's gonna move. In the meanwhile, Arc Warden was defending the bot lane. He killed off Skyrath Mage, who was uh, following up on that Winter Wyvern kill, and an assassin had to TP out. But Ori is progressing just fine. He is 700 gold away from completing his BOTs. 
And that's, this is like, whenever, you've crossed the hump of it being hard for Arc Warden after the laning phase. It kind of gets hard again in like the ultra late game sometimes, but I don't envision that being a problem given Braveheart's comp. Oh, surging out here. Clockwork Cook on the back line. Cog's gonna find himself CY. Lao is dropping low. They're gonna dump everything on this Clockwork for the poison. Takes one down and CY should get right click down here by the Brewmaster as well. They're just fighting all over the map. Essentially 3v5. Ori is not really joining this fight. Winter Wyvern has been having an extended date with the creeps. I'm surprised he's still going for this Midas. I mean, he could turn his love base into a Maelstrom if he didn't want it, but I guess the trade-off is that Venomancer didn't go for a Midas. Instead, he went for the Veil, and now he's going straight for an Aghanim Scepter. So... It's not too all-in on late game, because they're really ahead right now. They can push high ground after a Roche easily right now. Right. Oh my god, this has got to be the most annoying thing. Uh, hold that thought here, Paparazzi. Nice spike. Impale to follow things up, and now Reaper Scythe. Should be enough. Beautiful. So why Chan was standing there right-clicking the Plague Wards, right? Which is already annoying as it is. And Landon was non-stop drunk and hazing him as he's trying to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> At least he got a lot of one charges out of it, I guess. Uh, we, we asked this in the draft phase, we're like, what is Necro weak against? Now it's like, right clicks. And, well, we're seeing the, the symptoms of that right now. Dude can't do anything against the wards. And we saw this earlier also with uh, Rasta. There was a Rasta against a Necro, and Necro couldn't do anything. True. Alright. We got the Shadow Blade up on HMX. He is strong enough, I think, to kill maybe Ori... Actually, like, pretty much the cores he could actually kill, right? In Ironically, the supports are the ones that he can't kill. Yeah, but after this next level, Young Eleven's gonna have a point in Cold Embrace, and then all of a sudden you can't kill anyone all over again. Yeah. Assuming they're together and such. Yeah, which I don't think they have a reason to not be together. They've got BOTs now on the Tempest, so the Tempest can go do its own thing for the most part, as it now is going to die and give up a fair amount of gold to HMX. That's not, not bad. Flux, but... 180. Yeah, it's not bad. Next but no, I guess they are staying split. Young Eleven wants to keep farming elsewhere. Circles around. If he gets a Courier here, that's a lot of detection. Two century, four centuries, a Midas recipe, and a dust of appearance. That was a big win. He might pay for it, and he will pay for it. Nice cog back here. They will get a 6 7. HMX right on top of Paparazzi. And now he's gonna get gone on. He's gonna have to use the scythe. Ooh, juke through the trees. Can he actually dodge the scythe? He's dodging right now. Very nicely done. Paparazzi, how are you still alive? And now Y Chen is actually gonna get jumped on from the back line. Scythe coming in? No. No mana for the Scythe after he jumped forward, that's very unfortunate. Meanwhile, simultaneously, Bichi just runs over Braveheart. They just lost five. Yup. They tried to recover after the next session. I, I mean, I, I, I think it was the right call to kill the Courier. I don't think it was the right call for the team to be like, yeah, we can take this fight. It's not like we're 8k net worth down or anything. All of, it's not like all of Vichy Gaming have their ultimates up and running, but they went for it anyway, and oh, Venomancer pretty much single-handedly took them all, as now 876 is getting destroyed by this flex. Stand next to him! So Stand next to him! No, he had Urn and Poison on him, and Arctic Burn, oh. and Flux. <laughs> it was just like so much shit. Here we go, Lao A is going to take double Flux. I hit, Hulk's going to miss because he turned around for that great vacuum wall combination, but... It doesn't matter here. Vichy is just reaching your base. HMX comes in, takes the Aegis down very quickly. Now goes on Paparazzi, but needs to jump right back into that shrine. Reaper Scythe, gonna find another. Nicely done. Alright, good defense so far. So far here by Braveheart. But, even though Vichy has been leading a couple of kills, I think they're happy with what they got, and they'll go back for now. Yeah, all well, the ultimates are down. Primal Split is down, Poison Nova's down, Hookshot's down. I was actually surprised uh, Ori was not using the Diffusal Blade on his Tempest Double, and I thought that 
if you were able to get the purge off on Necro, you may have been able to finish him off, Dyer's but instead he was able to walk back to his shrine and survive just fine. But it's all good. Minor setback. They're still in comfortable position right now, and they're gonna take down the shrines very soon, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, Arc Warden is one of those heroes that you do have a ton of buttons to click, so... Oh yeah, for sure. Maybe, maybe he's sad, or maybe he doesn't know about the, the item interaction that you explained earlier. That's possible. Radiance Middle Tower has been denied. Dyer's top shot. Oh, Master. Oh, what a max range. Oh. Yeah. Well. Bre Master going for Aghanim Scepter. When's the last time you've seen that? That used to be like the only oh. item he goes for, right? Yeah, but that was back in the day when like I I've never been a f I always liked him when the Aghanim Scepter just made the primal spit splits like last for like 30 minutes <laughs> ever since they made all these changes like oh, okay he gets the spells gets the passives all that stuff I've never been a big fan of it because Brewmaster's biggest problem is staying relevant in the late game and his spells are just as irrelevant late game as it is early game it's the primal split itself as now young 11 he has winter's curse yeah he'll curse it right now and he trying to walks away oh my god it's gonna be a three-man oh call god. The mech's gonna give him a little bit of HP, but it doesn't matter. They're surrounded. They are gonna take down Fenrir, but the poisons, the, all of the dots, all of the ticks here, and the Diffusal Blade coming out. That is a triple and Ori. What a bait by O11. Ultra kill. Was Skyraph even in there? No, he was just in the back and just died to something. Feels bad, man. Yeah, I don't know what he died to. May have been Arc Warden coming in, but whatever the case, it was, uh kind of optimistic to go for a Winter Wyvern like that. Like, you know, like, Young Eleven hasn't used Curse yet, but he's definitely leveled Curse. There's no way he hasn't leveled Curse by now. And it was basically like three heroes in melee range going for it. And they got Curse, they got Cog, they got Combo. And, uh, I mean, the game is pretty over right now. I think it was pretty over five minutes ago. But, uh, With that offline wyvern, it was off. It was it was over at the draft screen. Clearly, I'm gonna real talk for a second. I think the offline wyvern did absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, more or less, it's really this Venno, and and this brewmaster and clockwork double support, dude. You got a lot of work. Yeah, I agree. The cores were you could have had any cores this game. I think. I think the Venno was a big part of it. He's just so annoying, right? Like he's making so much space. The way that he was playing. Block of Pokes are gonna find him. Fenrir is really good on this hero, but might be overseeing as well. Come Reaper Sight coming in, and, well, we asked whether you could get the kill. Yes, you can, but it's time to retreat. Dyer's bottom is under attack. That was pretty sick, right? Dyer's Mystic Flare Sight. I'm, that, that's the combo. That was what they've been trying to do for the past 20... It's only 23 minutes? My god, it feels like it's been like 30 minutes of VG Gaming steamrolling. But yeah, that's the, that's the play that they've been hoping for, but they just never got a chance to ever be in the upper hand of this game. They've always been trying to recover. Wyvern has Midas Maelstrom finish, so... He could be your uh, building seizure as well. You know, pop that Arctic Burn. It's true. Ho, 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 ho. They made that random change that I didn't really understand. What is... Oh, it's a Tempest. But it's still doing a lot. So, what's the random change? They said that, or it was something... I don't remember how it was worded, but basically, if you have, if you're a flying unit, you don't uphill miss anymore, and that's the oh, Slark is not in vision. Abrasi, nice. tanks the pounces, and now he pops a BKB. Okay, it's gonna be Y Chen. Should be surviving here. Meanwhile, HMX jumping away. They're still following him. Very good. I don't know if he's gonna make it out of here, even through his ultimate. Another Dark Park is gonna come out. They apply the debuff on him again. They're still hitting him. Okay, he's running away. Meanwhile, on the back line, another fight is breaking out. Skyrim Mage goes down immediately. HMX back in the fight here. Why Chen still being focused by multiple heroes? They're not going to be able to kill him through the darks here. HMX getting some HP. Everybody's on full retreat. Do we have another cog? Uh, not going to get the cog off. So that was not the worst for Braveheart, considering that they were so far behind. But still, another victory for Vichy. Well, they didn't kill anyone. So if you mean that they didn't get fully team wiped and they only lost two heroes, yeah. that it's not bad for Braveheart, then yes, technically, I guess you're right. But, yeah, I... 
Slark has no options this game. There's no one that he can go on. We said this at like 15 minutes. We're like, oh, well, he can only kill the cores. He can't kill the supports. Now he can't kill anyone. All he has is a Shadow Blade. That's not enough. Okay, I like this. The Dagon the Necro. Seems like getting kills is uh, a problem to begin with, but... Ancient Seal Dagon, Reaper Sight. Uh oh, but A76 gets purged, Surge is gone, and they're gonna just right click him down. Do they have detection? They have the dots, the mech's gonna get forced out. And A76 have to go back. Oh, the blinking ultimate, your Venom might actually die from here. He definitely is gonna be dead. Alright. Can the Venom answer ultimate out damage this trying? It looks like they will. All the right click damage of Gummy on Lao A. Lao A, uh, gonna take down from the poison and the right click? Yep. They track him down. Mio on HMX going on for Fenrir. Can't get that kill. The curse is gonna come down here. A76 taking a ton of right click damage. Nice primed up here. Really good spike though. Gets a panda kill. Now Ori might be a little bit of trouble. Trading right clicks here, but the Winter Wyvern keeping him alive. HYM or HMX, excuse me. Gonna go down as well. Vichy Gaming playing really sloppy, but they're just running over them at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the takeaway here. Like Vichy are not playing good. It's just that Braveheart are playing worse. And I don't really think it's like a like a skill thing, at least not this game. I think it's just like their heroes are not suited to deal with this Vichy draft at all. I mean, you're up 24k, right? At some point you yeah. just run at them and you'll do fine. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta blink to high ground and Venom will too. And properly get scythed. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Well, you got your- you got your core wyvern, and... Damn it all if it isn't entertaining. Again, I don't know how important it's been this game, but it's it's I love seeing lightning coming out of a big old wyvern. He actually has not done anything, but uh, okay, he's going. And for he cold embraced in that last team fight, and he set up that winter's curse. So those are two things that I, that a support wyvern could obviously not do, right? Right. Uh, he's gonna get Agon and Scepter, so we're gonna see a uh, full airplane mode. Yeah, we're gonna see airplane mode for like 10 seconds. Wyvern does not have the mana to support this. That's why you said it's usually like a fourth or fifth item, because you need something like a Bloodstone or an Orchid or a Yules to support this, as now 876 is going balls deep. Alright, well that's... Good attempt. Force the BKB. Yeah. Dude, Ori has just been like BKBing, like, just for giggles. He's already down to seven charges, and I'm pretty sure he's only had this BKB for like five minutes. It's fine, man, because when the game ends, it don't matter what your BKB charge is at. No, it certainly does not. And the Tempest double probably still has a ten second, uh, has a nine second BKB on the Tempest. Oh, there you go. Nope, Pop see, that BKB. Why not, man? Easy. Just on your double. Alright, 11. Got the Arctic Burn turned on. Don't really need to turn it on against the building, but, you know. <laughs> Paparazzi gonna get off his ultimate before he dies. He's done his job. HMX now going on the Winter Wyvern. and decides he can't kill it. On the back line here, Fenrir is gonna take down the Darks here. Ori actually gonna go down here, unable to use the sheaths against HMX. HMX is gonna clean up here. All right, here. Aegis triggered on the Winter Wyvern, but I don't think he has a blink or anything. So he has to fight this. Ooh, how misses? Might actually win the man fight. Do they have protection? Yes, they do. Eleven's gonna win this one. Heals up his ally. Now turns on Arctic Burn. And the lightning! The lightning takes us out! What a bounce here! Alright, oh, 011. How is this balanced? Okay. Now we're gonna go home. Alright, Winter Wyvern has officially done something in this game. Damn right. I... I... Well... They want... They want this young Eleven. 876, is he gonna go for the Vendetta hit? Oh, Young Eleven. He flying out, dude. Oh. Oh. Oh, uh, no. Uh. Dude, he's flying for such a long time. My god. He's, he's about to run out of mana, though. He doesn't have a TP. Oh, he has a soul ring, though. ring, soul ring, fine. 876 is still hot on his tail. Fly away now. <laughs> oh, my god. Oh, no. He's out of mana. He's actually... No, he's fine. I thought he was stuck. Wow. Oh man. That was uh the transatlantic man. 
Yeah, he was going cross country for that one. But now 876 is kind of screwed. He does not have Vendetta for another 10 seconds. And all of Vichy Gaming's are Power Rangering onto this top lane. Yeah. There you go. TP out. Where's the Clockwork Hook, dude? Fenrir's got bigger fish to fry. He knows that Necro might be in the vicinity, so he's looking for him, but Necro's already TP'd out. That was a dieback, Radiance if that even matters. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it does not matter. Wyvern uh, needs to get that mana back if he wants to actually do anything in the next fight. Is he like ferrying mangoes? No, the courier has nothing. Oh, cheese. There okay. we go. Young Eleven can just cheese up. Yeah. Young Eleven's like, I'm the real carry here. Let's go. Give me that cheese. Alright. Oh, fully expecting. Right, siege the tower. Paparazzi to jump yeah, in. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. Or this. This works. Vacuum, they got the Cyclone on the Darks there, on the back line, Ori popping the BKB, going right on Y Chan. Y Chan gonna get hooked as well. What? How did that actually follow? And now Y Chan taking a ton of damage. He's gonna survive. Ghost Shroud's gonna keep him alive. Meanwhile, Winter's Curse on the back line. Just to lock down the Slark as they click the, the Rax. Jumps forward. BKB again here from Ori. Finra being focused down, but he's getting healed up, so he's gonna be fine. HMX, no time to steal stats here as he needs to jump away. I heard a Reaper Sight going off at the back line. HMX. Still trying to jump away, gonna get just right clicked down by two supports. They call it the GG as the Rax is all fall. Well, this looks a lot more one sided than Braveheart's other game. Yeah. I'm gonna definitely say that Braveheart put a much better fight up against uh, LGD, I believe. Or Al. Wait. No, it was IG Vitality. Yeah. So, the IG Vitality made it look like even, but Vichy Gaming just straight memed on Braveheart and <laughs> it worked. I mean, I think seven minutes in the game, I asked you, is Vichy Gaming winning all three lanes? And you're like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and at that point, it doesn't matter if you're E-Home or some other world-class team, you're going to just lose. And Team Braveheart. Yeah. Watch him play really like, well. Like seeing the offlane Wyvern, that's for sure. <laughs> all right, well, we're done with game one. That was a, a good, fun one. I hope game two is also going to have an offlane Wyvern, although somehow, somehow I doubt that. Game 2 is coming up next, guys, so we'll take a break. Be right back.